There's an ongoing process through the Air Force Museum to do efforts like this. Well, it's a lengthy process, and uh, I have to give the credit to the team behind uh, the scenes, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jim Aaron and uh, all the uh, different contractors and agencies and SPOs uh, that have to do all the work behind the scenes to make it all happen. The museum itself that had to fund most of the bill to get the flight aircraft down here and do what we call the demil process to get all the fluids off the airplane. So it's really a huge team effort. Uh, we've been working on this a little over a year and a half uh, to get to today. So a long process. Well, I think, uh, you know, most people that have either been around the military or drive by a museum, they look over and they kind of wonder and want to know, hey, what was this like or what did these aircraft do? So to get an aircraft like the KC-10 into the museum and his amazing uh, ability to capture history of an aircraft that served almost 40 years or about 40 years in service and has flown around the world in every contingency since uh, the mid-80s through uh, today, it's still operationally fine because as the KC-10 was rolling off the flight line with then uh, McDonnell Douglas, they were delivered here to March Field in the mid-80s. So this particular aircraft, it was its first duty station uh, back in the mid-80s. So to bring it back home to where it first came into service and then retired here at the museum is just a great bit of Air Force history captured right here at the March Museum. First, be convicted and never surrender, right? There's a, there's a lot of things that have to be done behind the scenes. So get a hold of the right coordinating agencies, get the paperwork and the funds together, and find an organization that will sponsor it through. Because like I said, it took about a year and a half, almost two years of coordination to get to today. I'd encourage everybody, whether in the local area or wherever you live, to go visit the museums in your area. You know, March is such a great history of uh, an amazing museum from, from rocket engines, the C-141, the B-52, and all the history behind it. What they've done with this museum here is just amazing. And I know there's other museums around the country that uh, have great history too, whether it's out at the Smithsonian, out at Dulles, near Robbins Air Force Base, we have a great museum. And go out and capture and study the history and inspire the next generation to be great airmen for the defense of America. Uh, I'm Jamil Dada. I'm the president of the Marshfield Air Museum and the honorary commander for the wing here, the 452nd. I've been doing base support here for 36 years. So I was actually here in 1982 when this actual airplane first arrived here as a brand new airplane and was in service here for 12 years. And in 1991 I got to fly in this very airplane on a, a rodeo, to a rodeo event at McCord Air Force Base in Seattle. The Marshfield Air Museum is an AAM accredited museum and we keep the stories of the 106 year history of March alive. And as maybe some people may not know that of the 72 Air Force bases, March is the third oldest, 106 years, and that's what we try to do at March. So my goal here as president of the museum is to bring every airplane that has ever flown at March in the 106 years to the museum. And this was one of the planes we were missing. So we're really happy to have this back. And we can't wait for it to be on display. We've actually already moved three other smaller airplanes to make room for this. But we're very excited. And when these, this airplane and RKC-10s were flying here, they were white. So our plan is at some point to paint this white in its original colors. And we're going to put a March tail back on it. But this number is was the original number when it was flying here for the 22nd air refueling wing so very excited but i can't thank colonel jim aaron and major general jeff pennington for making this happen it was a two-year process and it's not easy but if it weren't for the general and colonel aaron general pennington and colonel aaron this would not have happened so i'm really really happy to bring this baby back home where it belongs for permanent display so our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and everybody can enjoy the history. So thank you.